The third agenda item is CU-2013-02. Staff, if you will please present this case. Yes, sir. This is a request for conditional use for the existing Parkwood facility in OP zoning, um, as we previously talked about. Um, it is, I believe, currently a 50-bed facility in your packet. I don't know if it's in this or not. There's a proposed site plan. That is an aerial site plan. You see the two orange roof buildings. Um, the one on the uh, top of the screen is a proposed activities uh, building. And then the one on the lower right is a 20-bed facility, sort of a dormitory. Um, it is, these are the expansions of the proposed, uh, proposed expansions of the facility. Um, you see some other features on the site plan in addition to the roofs and the new parking area. You also see a blue line running through the property. This is more of a side note. Um, like we had talked about at the work session, this is one mile branch. It is a state protected stream that has state uh, buffers, also local stream buffers. Um, mm -hmm. Part of their request, um, they are sort of the, the triple threat in this. It is rezoning and conditional use and also variances. The variances are being re uh, reviewed separately by the Zoning Board of Appeals, so I'm simply pointing this out as information. Um, the activities building is proposed to encroach by a few feet into the local stream buffer, so that is what they're requesting a variance from. Um, and also it is encroaching into the rear yard setback, which is along the north property line by a few feet. Um, that is the other variance. Um, those are reflected here in the site plan, and as a side note, staff is supportive of those variance requests. But for conditional use, it is for both the existing facility, which is not conforming, also for their proposed expansions. So I'll take care of both all at once. Um, all of the issues in terms of residential to the north, north to the south still apply. This is OP zoning. This is use specific within OP. And again, it is residential and institutional in character, and it fits very well with the surroundings. So staff is recommending approval of the conditional use with these five conditions you see here on the cover page. Number one. Approval shall be granted for a residential care facility consisting of both the existing and proposed buildings and other site improvements as depicted on the submitted site plan. Approval shall also be subject to approved variances by the CBOA. Number two, new buildings shall be residential in appearance and compatible in design with the existing buildings. Number three, plant trees and other vegetation within the buffer areas of One Mile Branch as approved by the City Arborist and the City Engineer in order to help stabilize existing stream banks and reduce potential erosion issues. Number four, maintain a shared access driveway with the adjacent existing professional office at 1519 North Lee Street. That's that professional office up in the northwest corner where the shared driveway is already existing. Number five, conditional use approval shall, uh, for the proposed expansion shall expire after five years from the date of approval if no building permits for the development are requested by that time. That's our standard expiration date kind of language. Um, these conditions have been reviewed with the applicant, and to my knowledge, they are still in agreement with them, but they are here to speak for themselves. And with that, um, we might have to answer any questions you might have. All right, thank you. Are there any questions for the staff or commissioners? Hey, just a quick question. Yes, uh, the shared driveway with, with uh, Jason Parker, I, I suspect that the adjacent I think they can address the details, and I don't think the surveys in this one that might be in the previous packet, but there's already an easement there. Um, they, it's already being used as a shared driveway, it's simply to maintain that. Um, the alternative is to create a second driveway in that vicinity on the Fort Police Street. That's just not a very good idea. Are there any other questions for the staff? If you look at the survey in the rezoning packet, which is the item before, um, about the fifth or sixth page in, um, if you use some imagination with the fine print, that's the actual use that's there. All right, if there are no other questions, or is, is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak in favor of this request? Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak in opposition to this request? I will now close the public participation portion of this request. 
discussion is now open them up to commissioners. There being no discussion, I will now entertain a motion from the commissioners. Mr. Chair, <coughs> Mr. Chair, Mr. Wiles, I'd like to make a motion that we approve this conditional use uh, request uh, uh, with the conditions that were previously stated by staff. Is it okay if I not reread those conditions? <laughs> Since we have them, that was fine. And uh, this is consistent with the comprehensive plan and conditional use review. And therefore, I'd like to uh, recommend to approve. We have a motion. I second. We have a motion by Mr. Wilds and a second by Mr. Bailey. Um, is there any discussion on the motion from the commissioners? There being none, all in favor, please indicate by raising your hand. All right, the motion passes unanimously. 